So I'm starting a project today, a fairly large one. Um, I've done large projects where they're, you know, huge murals, and I've done I've done so many projects I can't even think. But I've done big projects. However, I haven't done one in a while. Not, uh, not like size-wise big. I've done large projects where I've done hundreds of pieces for different shows. Uh, but not one big sizable project. And what I really wanted to work on, what I, my dream right now is to get, you know, a 25 to 30 foot wall and just do, just like start painting. And I have ideas of what I want to do, but they're very costly. Doing a project like that is is incredibly expensive, and so it's not something that I can do on my own right now. I did have a friend uh, who helped me get some canvas this week, so I bought uh, a canvas that's 70, 72 inches, t no, 84 inches tall, so it's 7 feet tall and 6 yards long. So that's 18 feet long, and I thought, yes, I can do it. But even that is just too expensive. And the canvas isn't big enough for the biggest stretcher I have right now, which is around 9 feet tall. So. I'm having to compromise, and I don't have um, I don't have a destination in place for this one. I just want to do it. I want to do it because it's making me crazy. And what I have in mind is this particular photograph, which I bought last year. It's three children. They're apparently on a farm. I'm not sure, but they're all seated on little stools, and there's so much white in here that it's been really bugging me that I wanted to do it. So I took one of the larger stretchers, not the largest one again, but using it as, a, as an idea, as a template, I laid it down on top of some unrolled canvas and started to think and then measured everything out so that um, I could eventually stretch this onto a stretcher, not the one that I have, but a better one that I'll have made, hopefully, and took it from there. So this particular piece of canvas that I have cut, and I don't think you can see the whole thing, is, um, how wide is it? I think it's seven, yes, it is, it's seven feet wide, which will go over a six foot stretcher, six foot wide stretcher, and it's eight feet long, uh, a little over eight feet long so that we can, you know, stretch it. Anyway, that's the surface I have to work on is six feet by eight feet. And I'm going to take this teeny weeny photograph and apply it. But again, as I work, it's layer on top of layer on top of layer. So I'll be using I'll be using other images when I start. I'll apply the black that I always apply in the Franz Klein kind of style. Then I'll be applying aerosols aerosol designs and I have some text in mind that I want to want to include in this and then I'll start with the oils. That's how I start every painting. So I thought what I'd do is sketch it out, which I have been trying to do, just so I get an idea. I'm not one to I'm not one to plan everything all the way through. Um, I like I, I plan and I do pre paint in my head, but I'm not married to that one idea that I've had. I, I'm flexible that way because sometimes it's a lot of fun to just kind of yeah, go with it. But in a painting this size too, as with any other painting, I have to think, how much is this going to cost? I already know that the canvas has cost me, the one roll that my friend helped me get, costs about $200. Then I've got aerosols, and I have I have a pretty good supply of aerosols, but these cost anywhere from six to nine bucks a can, depending on the quality and the, the company that I that I buy from. Then I've got the black gesso or chalkboard paint that I like to use. Then there's the oils. There's mineral spirits. There's Neo McGill. Neo McGill, my favorite thing. You know, there's a lot that goes into doing a painting. This isn't a coloring project. This isn't a pick up a, a coloring book for a buck and a box of uh, used crayons. This is, this is an investment. 
And I think that's what a lot of people don't understand about artwork. When they're looking at artwork and they start dickering with the artist, trying to talk them down, because there's no buffer there, there's no one to work between, you know, someone to step between and say, no, 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 this is the cost. A lot of artists allow themselves to be talked down and diminished. And God knows, it's happened to me thousands of times where people want my work, but they don't want to pay for it. They want it for free. Or they kind of laugh about the starving artist. I find it insulting. I don't find it amusing. I find it disgusting. This costs me money. Any artwork that you see cost the person that made it money. And a lot of times, for like people like me, the real the real artist who works at this, this is their whole life, that may be a week's worth of food. That could be a brand new pair of shoes that the artists need. It could be their phone bill. It could be their their rent. So I have no patience with people who want to diminish. And, I, you know, I say this out loud so that other artists can hear it and go, Oh, you too. You know, you, you've been through this too. To artists who go through this, you have got to stand your ground. You have to know your worth. You have to know your value. You know, have to know how much you have invested in your work. How much time it costs you. How much heart. How much... How much are you presenting a singular view that no one else has? There's a lot to consider when you're pricing your work. And there's a lot for the buyer to consider as well. It's an investment for the buyer if they're smart. The buyer can choose to support the artist, not just support the artist, invest in the artist, help that artist, and get a career off the ground where their investment is long term and it's not momentary to hang over the couch. This is an investment. This is putting your belief in someone else. As important as putting your money into a new smartphone and giving Apple all your dough, it's just as important to support and invest in the person next to you, the artist, that is probably affecting your community in more ways than you know. I've said this about a thousand times to people. I get my ire up when people say, oh, you're an artist, it's so cute, is the attitude. Creating artwork comes from your heart, comes from your soul. It is a reason that a lot of us exist. But we are far more than just colorers, coloring project kids in kindergarten. We actually design clothing, cars, community. We we record history, we design houses, we are responsible for the look and feel of everything that is man-made, every single thing. If you pull that box of cereal out of the cabinet and look at it, you bought it not necessarily because of the way it tastes, but because of the way it looks, and an artist designed that box. An artist designed your socks. An artist designed the carpet that you have in your house. That's how important we are. That's how much we affect humans. Human <laughs> affect society, sorry. So I do get my ire up, and sometimes I actually like sputter and sweat when I'm talking about it, because I get so, mmm. You do not allow anyone to belittle you. As an artist, you never allow someone to belittle you. You are ten times more important to the community than most people will let you believe. So when you're planning out your work, no matter how big or how small, you need to understand your worth. How much money have you invested in the project? 
and then don't sit around praying and you know hoping that somebody might come along and offer you half that price or a tenth of that price. That is your price, you stand your ground. Because not everyone can do what we do. If they could, they wouldn't want it so badly. They're sitting at home doing it themselves. So what I'm doing, I have to lay out the children. I'm just doing like a general um, general idea of the shape because this is so big that I want a general idea of the shape. And it's not because I'm going in with the gesso and I'm going to follow those lines exactly. I'm not going to be paying any attention in a minute. But it is smarter for me to have a good idea of where everything belongs. So when I do go to apply, I'm not wasting money. I'm not wasting material. And I know there's a lot of artists who grid things out. I don't grid anything out. I like the element of surprise. I would prefer that this was already stretched. Because I like being able to take it and turn it on its side and turn it upside down, but that's not going to happen today. So, I guess we're as close as I'm going to get. Sorry, close as I'm going to get for right now is laying this out. I'm just going to apply some black. This is another thing that isn't written in stone. It will get covered, it will get drawn on, it will get painted over. It's almost of no concern. Except that it is. <laughs> Another day, we have a storm coming. The illness that I have is acting up, so I'm not sure I want to invest whatever energy I have left today in this. I'm sorry, what I'm doing right now is how I think about the painting, how I work it through. I try and connect with the canvas, with how it feels. 
and my head is working through the, the painting as I'm doing this. And I'm putting these splatters on, but it doesn't, work. <laughs> doesn't mean I'm married to it again. It gives me the option later of keeping them or not. This is when it's easier for me to have it stretched because I can take it and turn it and kind of work out the, the whole thing without it feeling um, stayed. Like, oh, you know, this is right side up. I actually hate working that way. canvases, four foot by four foot canvases. And I quite honestly, although I studied art history a little bit, I don't really remember a lot, and I haven't studied a tremendous amount. I don't want to be painting like anyone. I don't want to be a derivative of someone else. So I've kind of stayed away. I have people that I really enjoy and I understand on a visceral level that I don't want to be, oh, you know, the guy that paints like. And then someone said to me, that underpainting that you do is like Franz Klein. And I went, oh my god, of course, someone else has done this. But, again, none of it was intentional. It just happened. I happen to like painting on black. You know what, i got to clean up this mess while well, it's still wet, but, and the heat's coming on. So there we are, whether you're taking on a project this big or a small project, think about the investment, how much, how much is it going to cost you in materials, how much time, how much energy, plan it through, have an idea of what you're going to do, but be flexible about it. And then once it is finished and you have determined your value, you stick to it. There are tons of people in this world who are waiting to talk you down. But as an artist, you cannot, cannot, cannot let them. You cannot let people devalue you. Devalue you. Okay? Alright. I'm going to clean this up. <laughs> Ciao.